Welcome to the second part of the introduction to Spotlight on Sharks. This video is going to take a look at the remarkable way in which sharks reproduce, the different types of shark and the general threats that impact on shark survival. I find the reproduction of sharks fascinating and includes the ability to reproduce asexually by a process called parthenogenesis. This usually occurs in animals that are less well developed than sharks but a smooth hound shark kept in an aquarium for 10 years with another female produced a female baby. It has also been observed in other sharks such as white spotted bamboo shark, black tip sharks and bonnet head sharks. In parthenogenesis an egg can develop into an embryo without being fertilised by a sperm. The process of courtship varies with shark species but fertilisation occurs internally by the male inserting one of his claspers into the female's cloaca. What happens next again depends on the species. About 30% of sharks are oviparous, that is they lay eggs. The eggs are placed in rocks or algae, the embryos develop in the egg and feed on the yolk. Depending on the species, these sharks will lay anywhere from 10 to 200 eggs. Examples of oviparous shark species include the epaulette shark and horn sharks. Sharks also give birth to live young. There are two ways in which this can happen. One is by ovoviviparous embryonic development. This is when the developing embryo feeds on the egg yolk of the yolk sac and the fluids that the walls of the oviduct secrete. When they are ready, the eggs hatch inside the mother and the pups are born alive and fully developed. Some species practice a form of cannibalism known as oophagy, which means that they will eat the remaining eggs that have not been fertilised. Sharks that are ovoviviparous give birth to very small litters with only one to eight pups. Ovoviviparous shark species include cookie cutter sharks and great white sharks. The fourth way of development is called viviparity. The developing embryo hatches inside the mother when the yolk supply runs out. The yolk sac is then converted into a placental connection with the mother, similar to a mammal's umbilical cord. The cord is located between the pectoral fins and delivers nutrients and oxygen from the mother's bloodstream. The pups are left with a belly button for a few months after birth. Viviparous sharks also give birth to small litters of 2 to 20 depending on the species. Some species of shark that are viviparous include hammerhead and lemon sharks. The gestation period of sharks depends upon the species but lasts from 3 to 4 months or could be up to more than 2 years. Large sharks often have a gestation period longer than the small species. Elasmobranchi are organised into two infraclasses. Rays and skates are members of Batoidea and sharks belong to the infraclass Selachii. There are eight orders of shark. One of these orders include the dogfish sharks, of which there are 131 species, making it one of the most diverse types of shark. Examples of sharks in this order are Greenland sharks and Ninja lantern sharks. Another order is the cow and frilled sharks, of which there are only seven species, making this the smallest order. Examples include the South African frilled shark and the blunt-nosed six-gill shark. Saw sharks make up another order and only have eight species and all have snouts that look like saws. Examples of these include the long-nosed saw shark and the tropical saw shark. The fourth order is the angel sharks, of which there are 26 species. Angel sharks are among the most endangered sharks in the world. They live along the bottom of the ocean close to coastlines, which means they're often caught as a byproduct of fishing. They include the sand devil and the Taiwan angel shark. There are also bullhead sharks, which have 10 species, including the horn shark and zebra bullhead shark. The sixth order is mackerel sharks, which include not only great hunters such as great whites and thresher sharks, but also the filter feeding giant, the basking shark. Carpet sharks make up the seventh order with 45 different species including the whale shark and the nurse shark. And finally we have the ground sharks. This is the largest order of sharks with 296 species. In fact 55% of all shark species are ground sharks including hammerhead sharks and reef sharks. Modern sharks may have been around for millions of years but unfortunately many are on the IUCN list as critically endangered such as the oceanic white tip shark, the scalloped hammerhead shark and the short tail nurse shark. Sharks are particularly vulnerable to a loss in numbers. As they take a long time to reach maturity, their gestation time can be long 
and they have relatively few offspring. The threats faced by sharks are many, but overfishing is the main problem. It has been estimated that 100 million sharks are caught each year, either intentionally or as a result of bycatch. Many are caught only to have their fins cut off and the rest of their body thrown back into the sea in a practice called shark finning. The fin is used in shark fin soup, a delicacy in Chinese culture. Shark fins are worth a lot of money, as much as $500 per pound. The body is thrown back into the water to save space on the boat. The shark then dies horribly. They are unable to swim and are bleeding heavily. They either suffocate or die of blood loss. Sharks are also fished for their liver oil, particularly deep sea sharks. This can be found in products such as moisturizers, lip balm and suntan lotions. It is labeled as squalene. Shark cartilage is sold as a health supplement and claims to help a variety of conditions such as arthritis, rheumatism and even cancer. However, there is no clinical evidence to support these claims. Shark skin is used for leather as it is very durable. It is used to make items such as wallets, handbags, jackets and even football boots. Shark teeth and jaws, particularly white sharks, can fetch huge sums of money. A single tooth can sell for over $100 and a whole jaw can be sold for up to $10,000. Sharks are also at risk due to habitat destruction. Many sharks reproduce or give birth and feed in coastal and estuarine waters. Human activities, including trawling, mangrove removal, coastal development, mining, aquaculture and pollution, have destroyed or put these habitats in danger. Some sharks also rely upon coral reefs for food and shelter. Rising global temperatures and ocean acidification are destroying these habitats, with coral bleaching becoming ever more prevalent. Climate change can also affect migration, food distribution, reproduction and behaviour. Research has already seen migration patterns in tiger sharks and black tip sharks being influenced by warming water temperatures. And studies into epaulet sharks have shown that warming temperatures have affected their reproduction, something that it is believed could also occur in other sharks. Why should we worry about shark numbers declining and species becoming extinct? Well, they play a vital role in our oceans. As apex predators, they maintain their prey at a healthy number. They help remove the weak and the sick, as well as keeping the balance with competitors, helping to ensure species diversity. A great example of this is the tiger shark, which likes to eat a tasty turtle. Turtles like to eat seagrass, and when tiger sharks are in the area, they tend to move around to different seagrass meadows, and not just feed on the same one continuously depleting that particular meadow. So whether you love them or hate them, sharks are extremely important to the health of our oceans by maintaining biodiversity. I hope you have enjoyed learning something about these awesome predators and will join me on a journey of discovery about the lives of some of my favourite sharks. And don't forget to send in your requests for a spotlight on your favourite shark. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.